Hi everyone, my name is Miss Connolly. I started making videos to help my fifth grade students and decided to make them public to everyone so we can get as many students learning during this crazy time. Um, so I hope this is helpful to you. Parents, I know we learned math in a different way, so I hope it's helpful to you. And students, if you're learning, feel free to share. Teachers, if you like it, also feel free to share. Anyone um, can use any of these videos. So today we're gonna talk about line plots. So when we make a line plot, it's a way to display data. People can interpret it quickly. Um, they'll understand the data set. So let's get started, okay? So um, today we're gonna talk about moth wingspans. And I just put a little picture in here in case you were confused about what a wingspan is. So from one end of a moth's wings to the other end would be its wingspan. Not sure why the curriculum does so much wingspan stuff, but here we are. So let's take a look at the data that was collected for moth wingspan, and it was in inches. Okay, so in fifth grade, when you're given a data set to make a line plot, you are going to most likely be seeing fractions and mixed numbers. So I want us to just take a look at these, and if you're noticing what I'm noticing, um, we're dealing with different denominators. So one thing that I like to do before I make the line plot is I like to give everything the same denominator. Um, common denominators make it easier for us to interpret the data and also um, easier when it's time to answer questions about the data. So when I think about fourths, eighths, and halves, I'm thinking what could be a common denominator for everything. So I'll let you pause for a second, or I'll pause for a second and let you think, or you can hit pause and think. Um, so when we're thinking about common denominators, the halves, fourths, and eighths, we can all make eighths so that we are able to make a line plot that makes sense and then answering the questions after will be a little bit easier. So um, there is a video out there about making equivalent fractions. We're gonna be multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same number. So um, if we think about three fourths and we wanna make it eighths, I multiplied four by two. So if I multiply the denominator by two, I'm multiplying the numerator by two. So three fourths is equivalent to six eighths. One and one fourth, I'm gonna make equivalent to two eighths, not the um, actual point of this lesson. So um, I am going to just whip through this. One and one eighth, seven eighths, already have the denominator of eighths. One and one half is the same as one and four eighths. And I'm crossing these ones up, off up here just so I can keep track of what's going on and how I'm gonna do my work. So we know 3 fourths already is 6 eighths. Okay, one and 3 fourths is gonna be one and 6 eighths. Really hard to write on the screen, doing my best. All right, one and 3 eighths already has the denominator of eighths. One whole, 3 fourths is the same as 6 eighths. One and five eighths, it already has a denominator of eighths, and I'm gonna change one and one fourth to one and two eighths. Okay, so again, I made the data set all have the same denominator so I can make my line plot. If you wanna make the same denominator after when you're answering questions about your line plot, that's fine, but that's how I like to roll. So when we look um, down here, here's where we're, our line plot's gonna come into play. So I already put the numbers because it's so hard to draw on the screen. Um, so what I did was I thought about what was the lowest measurement for a moth's wingspan, and I put it over here, and then I counted by eighths. So six eighths, seven eighths, one whole, one and one eighth, one and two eighths, one and three eighths, one and four eighths, one and five eighths, one and six eighths. So this is known as, oh, and that's the, the mouse, just ignore that. So this is known as the range, the, um, from the lowest measurement of the wingspan to the highest measurement. So the range is the distance between the lowest um, point in your data set to the highest point in your data set. So we'll talk about how to find the difference between that in a second. So back to making the line plot. So what we have to do is we are going to draw an X for each moth. The X is gonna represent one moth. Okay, so let's look at our first piece of data here. Six eighths. This moth's wings um, measured six eighths inches from one side of the wing to the other side of the wing. Okay, so what I'm gonna do to represent one moth that measures six eighths inches is I'm gonna put an X above six eighths. 
Okay, that X represents that there's one moth that measured six eighths of an inch. Okay, then I'm gonna cross off that piece of um, data. I've already taken care of it. I wanna make sure that my line plot's accurate. So we check off that we did that. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the next moth. The next moth measured one and two eighths inches. So I am going to put an X above one and two eighths inches to represent that one moth so far has measured one and two eighths inches for their wingspan. Okay, and then I'm gonna keep going. This moth here measured one and one eighth inches. So I'm gonna put an X above one and one eighth inch. Again, remembering that one X represents one moth. All right, then I go to my next piece, seven eighths. I'm gonna put an X here. Then I go to my next piece, one and a half inches or one and four eighths inches. And so you can see one X represents one moth has measured one and four eighths inches. Okay, so now we have a unique, not a unique situation, but our first um, encounter of this situation. We have another moth that is measuring six eighths of, six eighths of an inch for their wingspan. We already put an X here to represent one moth had six eighths of um, a wing inch for a wingspan. So what we do when we get to the second one is we put an X, the same, we could try to make all your X's the same size, it's kind of hard on the computer, but you want to put the same size X because it's going to help us compare the um, height of the X's when we look at it quickly. Um, so right now, what I see over here, very important, two moths have measured six eighths of an inch so far. So two moths, each X represents a moth. It's very important to keep track of what your X's represent. All right, so I'm gonna cross this off and I'm gonna continue um, with my um, data. So one and six eighths inch for this one and cross it off as I go. One and three eighths, cross it off as I go. one hole, I put the X right wherever I'm representing the data, and then you're gonna see we have another six eighths of an inch, uh, six eighths of an inch for a wingspan. Okay, I'm gonna cross it off, and now it's clear that three moths have measured six eighths of an inch for their wingspan. Okay, so then I'm gonna go on to the next one, one and five eighths inches, cross it off as I go. And then my last measurement is one and two eighths inches. I see a moth already measured this. So I have two moths that both measured one and two eighths inches. So here we have the, um, all of the data represented here on our line plot. We did that by putting an X above each measurement that a moth measured. <laughs> Sorry, it's like a tongue twister. So let's think about some of the things that we can interpret just from looking at this. And I'm gonna get rid of some of this stuff up here so it's not um, so complicated. But what I want you to do while I'm erasing is I want you to think about um, what do you notice about the um, line plot? What information can you gain from it quickly? And I'm going to make sure that I have the right amount of data points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so I was just making sure there's 12 measurements up here. I represented my 12 moths on the line plot. Okay, so what did you notice? I'm hoping that you noticed that the most common um, measurement for a moth's wingspan was six eighths of an inch right because we see that three of them measured this and that's the most moths for one particular measurement okay let's talk about that word range that i was talking about before oh man hard to write here <laughs> there it is the word range so the range is going to be the difference between your um longest measurement and your shortest measurement in the data set so your range is from six eighths to one and six eighths. 
And so we know that we have a one inch difference, a full inch, because that's the difference between these two numbers, from the longest wingspan to the shortest wingspan, and that's known as our range. Some other questions you might have to answer is, what is the um, shortest measurement for a wingspan? And a common mistake that happens is that kids go and say, uh, well, um, um, one in four eighths only has one moth there, so that might have been one of the shortest measurements. Be careful what I'm asking. I'm asking about the shortest wingspan, which means that six eighths of an inch is the shortest measurement for a moth. Even though there's three X's here, you have to remember that the X's represent the moths. Okay, so you might be asked about range. You might be asked about what's the, um, the shortest moth. That would be six eighths of an inch. What is the longest wingspan? That would be one and six eighths of an inch. We talked about what is the um, most common measurement, and that would be this one because three moths measured here. What's the second most common? It would be this one because it has two X's here and the rest of them only have one. So always keep in mind what your X's represent. Another question you might get asked. You might get asked if um, you laid out all of the moths that measured six eighths of an inch, how many, how long would their wingspans be if they were lined up? So what are they asking you to interpret there? They're asking you to interpret what these X's mean. So again, the question is, if I took all of the um, moths that had a wingspan of six eighths of an inch and lined them up end to end, so six eighths, six eighths, six eighths, um, how long would the, the moths be? So what they're asking you to interpret is that there's three moths that all measure six eighths of an inch. So um, you would have to add six eighths plus six eighths plus six eighths. And you would keep in mind that when we're adding with fractions, the denominator doesn't change and you would end up with 18 eighths inches if they were all lined up next to each other, which is two holes and two eighths left over. So one fourth inches if they were all laid out end to end. Okay, you might be asked um, if you took the longest moths and put them end to end with all of the shortest moths, how long would all the wingspans be lined up? And they're asking you to interpret that this is the longest measurement plus these three X's. So that is one type of line plot that you might be asked to do. There's examples of some of the questions. And remember, we want you to keep track of what your X's represent. You'll also notice before we got started, um, I had labeled the, the line plot underneath. I had taken um, the data set from 6 eighths of an inch. I looked at my range beforehand and knew what to label, but typing in would have taken forever on a video. Um, and I also labeled what um, the line plot represented, which is important too. Okay, so one type of line or one type of data that you might have to interpret on line plot is right here. And I hope that was helpful. Bye.